waiting for taking the time to watch this an important video. Uh, my name is Nick Tindall. I'm out of the AEM office and serve as a staff liaison for the associate group uh, member executive committee. Uh, in the past year, we've had a very important policy discussion uh, between uh, the AEM show committees and the associates member group to come up with a new non-existent vendor policy that works for both our OEM members that exhibit at trade shows like Con Expo and our supplier associate members. To, to help uh, increase positive interaction between our exhibitors and, and non-exhibit vendors at a test show, uh, we've created this best practices uh, webinar to help educate any participants at Con Expo to maximize their show experience. And today, to uh, go through these best practices, we have some experts online, starting with Mike Carr from uh, QDI Strategies and Scott Nelson from Rev B. And also, we're going to have some great information about this new Con Expo show coming up from uh, Dina out of our Milwaukee office. So, yeah, let me hand it off to, to Mike Barr and you can kick off this uh, informative discussion. Nick, uh, glad to help here. Like the associate members at AEM, QD clients are the ag and construction equipment manufacturers and the component suppliers to those manufacturers. QD discovery research, voice of customer, voice of dealer research to help those firms turn those uh, products, innovations, technologies into room profit. So, since our clients are the folks that are exhibiting there, it doesn't really make sense to exhibit a con expo for us. But it's a exciting show. I'll see the technology, want to see some of our clients and how they're turning our ideas into the messaging, positioning, pricing on the floor. So that means I'll be there and have an opportunity to interact with people. Say, gee, this is a business development activity. I look at the exhibitor list, there are probably hundreds of the firms we help. So, you know, how hard is it to maximize your con expo connections and networking with all that opportunity? You know, hard-won experience through the 2008-2011 Con Expo. Some of the people I want to meet with may not be at the show. Large firms don't bring everybody. A particular contact I've been talking to may not be there. Second, they may be there, but they're not at the booth the minute they walk in. It's pretty difficult to do that schedule. Third, again, uh, hard learned at the 2008 Con Expo. Uh, just one time touch to walk into a booth, have a conversation with somebody, really needs nowhere. It's not a profitable like, business development activity. And leave a business card for the person I'd like to have talked to this evening, it's even less than worthless. And finally, it turns out I don't have time to talk to hundreds of companies there. So I'm guided by sort of two principles. And uh, the slide you see here, these uh, slide two principles. One ROI, return on investment for my time. Second is the value add to the prospect. At any time, it's important to have the people we're talking to. It becomes really important at Con Expo where their time is so scarce. So, let me talk about the pre show activities that I do prior to getting to the show, how I maximize the value for myself, and how I'm adding to those people I want to talk to. And that's got some great at the show techniques. I'll leave that part of the discussion to you. So I've already put two things on my calendar, eight and out, the this activity where I have clear objectives for every account that I want to talk to. Accounts, new accounts, prospects, what is it that I want to do with the relationship, how I want to move it forward, who I want to talk to, why they meet me, I want to buy all of those things. I'm getting a little specific as I go through here. Um, for a prospective client, you're trying to figure out if we help them. They're trying to figure out what we can do. So I want to meet to introduce the specific thing we can help them with and the fact that the product or technology or service capabilities on display at Con Expo gives a good reason to do that at the show. It may be that we're early in stage, we've had some conversations, I just want to meet face to face, give some comfort who I is, who I am. Um, I literally use that as a chance to meet face to face for a few minutes. If they're highlighting a technology, and I want to see the technology. That I want them to see something at the uh, uh, tech exit, where that some client is doing that, that uh, they see what's happening in another group. I have a specific reason to call, and I've outlined that. 
starting to realize that those conversations aren't easy, they're going to take some time. The um, we're, we're of measuring marketing activity to help a number of our clients do a business development activity. So when I look at my and measure that, the Farm Progress Show, second the Farm Progress Show, I was there from 8.30 to 4.30 and had 12 good conversations. And that's fairly typical. Um, a 20 to 20 or 30 minute conversation, five to 35 minutes to write it up, ideally right afterwards. What to learn, what are they trying to accomplish? What my follow up action? Uh, only write that up by the end of the day. We I can do about 45 minutes for contact for about 12 in a good day. So, a list of four firms are going to whittle down to probably 20 people I'm talking to. I know all of that eight weeks out so I can start the plan. The next week's out, I construct my timetable. What do I committed to? What educational talks do I want to see? Um, what the tech experience? This is outline the time I have available. Not only so I don't double book myself in a scheduling meeting on top of something else that I want to do, but they provide anchors and other ways to talk about the prospects. For example, Dan Anford's got a great talk on machine control. I want to be there to see the latest thing to have to say. I want to see how contractors react to that. But it also gives me an opportunity to ask for folks who have or may be involved in machines or they're by machine control. We get the talk. Are they interested in what's happening in the talk? Does it make sense to connect with them before or after that talk? These are things that I've now set up and I make phone calls given my schedule to get who I want to talk to. That's not common. When I get a phone call, get to a conversation, or in some cases they're so busy, we start with an email exchange. Will they be there? Is there some chance to connect? Here's what I'd like to learn. Um, again, I learn they may not be at the show, or they're not going to be at the talk, but it allows me to have them in touch and bring up the next thing I'm going to do with that account. Smile so is not a meeting at Con Expo for the sake, for the sake of keeping me busy. Again, I want my time to be paid. My goal is to move a relationship forward with the account. By having a chance to talk about it. We're a lot of time nowadays talking about smart machines, connected machines, telematics. Um, the fall beforehand, talk about what they will be showing there. Is there something that I should see that help me develop a proposal? How we can help? Is the conversation I want to have having that before kind of perfectly acceptable? In cases, they will say, I'm committed to, to client I probably won't have time. You can stop by the booth, but I doubt I'll have time. In which case, I ask, is there someone who can walk me through that tell us offering? Is there somebody who can talk to me what you're doing in the new product line so a better understanding and give us a better proposal? That only gives me background information. It generally gives me a chance to meet somebody who's an influencer in the decision and get another perspective on what the issues and challenges they have to make a better supplier to them. So all this is planning goes on. You then end up with a series of hard scheduled meetings, a series of stop by when you have a chance, and a series of conversations where we might want to try and connect over a specific technology talk that's going on. Um, thoughts for you? Um, for those calls and before uh, I for Con Expo, I reread David Wood's excellent book, The Art of it's a superb tool, and I highly recommend it. So, like I reread it before a lot of these events. And the second is, if you've got any questions, I'd be happy to help. Feel free to follow up with me. Um, and we can care works for you. So I I'll turn over uh, behavior at the show to Scott Nelson, uh, Rev D. Scott? It really did. Uh, it's a great page. So I'll plan it ahead. It covered a lot of ground there. I appreciate that. Uh, great shows are also to be a great place for discovery as well. So to keep up with the new technologies and needs that are being pursued by your customer base, I'm going to differentiate yourself from your competition and identify potential customers that can benefit from your products. Remember that the exhibitors are primarily existing uh, existing customers gain access to new opportunities both within their existing customer base and with new potential customers. But for the personnel of the show represent a significant investment. And the available time at their booth to interact with the target customers is valuable to them. Many of them are showing their latest product enhancements, some of which may not even be marked yet. 
that when you're in a customer group that the blue personnel is primarily sales professionals and they want to help you. So they your badge, trying to read your shirt, logo, trying to place the names so they know how to help you. Introduce yourself. You don't make them guess who you are. Let them know that you're not necessarily a target customer. You're with the company. This is what you do in the industry. And maybe even if you're a, if a current supplier to them, what you do for them specifically. Make it clear you don't want to occupy their time. If I, I even try to help them, if I can and point them to another potential customer and ask if it's okay if I spend a few times uh, in them and understanding their product. One of the host is going to be more than uh, accommodating. Welcome you to the booth. Be happy to offer some insight on what the focus is. And this is your opportunity to understand what's important to the customer. Themselves in their competition, and it's not not a time to sell the blue person on your solution. My presentation uh, made the blue by the Chanel as it pertains to your particular product interest and help you understand the need that if you can actually provide a solution. I think a great uh, place to meet with a contact you meet at the show or you plan ahead is uh, is that the that experience. It's located just outside of soft off. And this is the meeting outside of the show booth for the customer, and also is a great opportunity for you to be inspired by the new technologies that are driving the industry. That's really I wanted to touch on today, and I'm going to turn it over at this point to Dan. Thanks, Scott. So I'm going to start with um, going over our non exhibiting vendor policy, or as we like to shorten it to NEV, um, and just uh, highlighting the revisions that have been to that policy. So, um, if you are familiar with some of our other AEM trade shows, you'll notice that this revised policy, the big um, thing is that it introduces, introduces a member and non-member tiers with scale pricing and benefits. So by the member benefits, they include reduced batch pack pricing, access to the exhibit floor and education sessions on all show days, additional restaurants per company, and the option to attend future shows again as that non-exhibiting vendor registrant category. So, like you'll see at the bottom of the slide there, take a moment to highlight our new badge pack for the show. This is something that we introduced this year we're really excited about, and, and it's a, a bundle to offer. So, included in our badge pack are a free multi-day pass to ride the Las Vegas monorail, Free deluxe coach busing to and from the show and most of our official show hotels. Generally, that's going to mean any hotel that's not within walking distance of the convention center. Access to the seven different halls and lots for Con Expo, Con Ag, and ISB. Discounts at various Las Vegas bars and restaurants. Of course, access to our new tech experience at the show. As we talked about the policy and registering for the show, um, I do want to highlight a couple of uh, the tools that we have to just help you prepare for the show. And the first thing is the online show directory. So this can be found on the show website, and that's conexoconag.com. And here you can per create a personalized planner with um, tagged or favorited exhibitors, and you can create a custom calendar. And um, it, it, the, the site is really great. It has you know, a robust search capability to really help you easily find exhibitors or specific products that you're looking for, and just kind of make it um, a little bit more convenient to have a, a plan of attack. You know, to get the ground running when you're out there. Something that I wanted to mention, speaking of, um, you know, when you're on site at the show, is the mobile app. So this actually will sync up with that um, person, if you will, that from that you create on the online show directory. So it's really going to allow you easy access to any of that pre-work that you did. If you say you use the information or if you jotted down a note about something, and it also is going to benefit site there at the show that is going to give you access to our maps, um, exhibitor locations, booth numbers, you know, all lots and all that other helpful information that will really just make navigating around the show easier. And the mobile app actually is available for download on the Apple iTunes Store and the Google Play Store. Now that I've been talking a little bit about on-site, I just wanted to highlight, again, um, a big change for this show is that our badge packs 
are not going to be mailed in advance of the show. So a big deal, so we have um, added some additional pickup locations throughout Las Vegas. So those are going to be at our, um, some of our select official hotels and also at uh, Las Vegas McCarran Airport. And um, obviously our goal with that is to help make that batch pickup process truly just more convenient for you. So you know, additional information will be coming um, and we'll have that available on our website specifically which hotels and the days and the hours that um, it will be open. And of course, if you don't have a chance to use these uh, locations that are throughout the city, you can also always come on site and pick up your badge directly at the show. And then you can do that in one of three different full service registration areas we have or we will have at the show in 2017. And those areas are going to be located in the Westgate Convention Center the Golat and the Broadway. And so finally, just a few things about on-site at the show. And either we have our um, wonderful uh, overview map there for the show. Uh, one thing to note that the show does new footprint and, you know, some of the product areas may have shifted a little bit. So um, just, there might be a few changes from what you are maybe familiar with from three years ago if you were out there. Um, I also want to point out, I, I said it um, just before, but it's such a thing that we think is really going to be valuable to take advantage of um, all that free transportation that we're bundling to get you to and from the show, whether that would be those hotel shuttles or that monorail path, um, getting you there to the show to make it easier. And then also to I'm focusing on just for a reminder that, you know, per the policies and our rules, and this is for all attendees, support that no merchandise, literature, giveaways, giveaways or rule bags, of course, are permitted on the show floor during show hours. So hopefully this information has been helpful. It's just a real little light sprinkling of all the new and exciting things that we have going on at the show. And of course, you can find a whole bunch of additional show planning information online at the show website. And with that, we look forward to seeing you in March in Las Vegas. Great much for all of our presenters. And if we could go to the next slide there, it'll have my contact information. Um, you know, I really hope you found this uh, webinar informative and can help you to increase your ROI at the next Con Expo. But if you have any questions, any specifics about additional information you'd like, uh, please reach out to me, Nick Tindo with A. And we'll be happy to get that information to you to, to help your business be successful at Con Expo. With, I look forward to seeing you in March in Las Vegas. Thank you, everyone.